Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new edition of Message of Hope. And today, directly from Scotland, I have the pleasure to be with uh, Christian McNeil, who is an author of this beautiful book, Addiction, One Solution, One Cause, One Solution and um, also a, uh, a coach. So welcome, Christian. Thank you very much, Martine. Thank you for asking me. It's an honor. It really is. Um... Oh, it's an honor for you to accept <laughs> it for, for your busy schedule. And um, I will ask the infamous question, and uh, which is uh, all having this understanding, how does that help you with, uh, with stress, with, uh, with events, or whatever shows up um, in your life? Um, yeah, thank you. Great question. Um, well, I'm certainly not someone who knew <laughs> stress and anxiety before I stumbled into this understanding. And I, I, and I suppose what it comes down to is stumbling across the three principles showed me that I was never feeling stress because of my circumstances which is what I had believed up until then. And it was always about how I was thinking about my circumstances or the, the beliefs that I was entertaining about my circumstances or, or the beliefs I was entertaining about what my future looked like, because I think stress and anxiety is often very future orientated. Mm -hmm. And that sounds very easy to say, um, but it's not just some kind of simple, um, you know, made up thing. And, and, and what has happened to me since I came across this work is that through insights that I've had, through conversations such as this, through working with my own coaches and mentors, I've seen that it was always the case that the thing that happened actually had no power to create a feeling in me. It wasn't until I started to, to, you know, ruminate on it or worry about it or get anxious that, um, the, um, that stress was created. And, and what I was able to do was to pick out even from the past, that suppose something that I really didn't want to happen occurred, like, let's say, I don't know, I had a flood in my house. Um, I, I could get very worried about that, you know, what, how I would get it fixed, how much it would cost, you know, the, what was ruined and all of that sort of stuff. But even if something like that had happened before I came across the principles, I wasn't in a state of anxiety or stress all the time. I was only in that state when I was kind of caught up in those thoughts. So gradually I began to see the truth of this um, essential f um, kind of fact of nature, law of nature, that we're not, we're never feeling our circumstances, we're feeling our thinking. And, the, and, and that had its own effect because it meant that less and less was I at the mercy of circumstances mm -hmm. or, you know, other people's behavior or COVID or lockdown, um, you know, it gave me a certain freedom. So I might get some information about something new and my first instinct might be to worry or, you know, to, to, to start to kind of um, become anxious about it. But very quickly, I would come back to, well, I don't need to feel that, you know, I can allow myself to come to a place of neutrality. But the other aspect for me is that new, neutrality is not, it's not passive. So if we were to come back to something like COVID or lockdown, I had my own thoughts about how it was being handled and some of the so-called mitigation. And I, you know, I, I was very against it. Before I came into this work, which was about 10 years ago, I had been a lawyer for a long time and much of what was happening concerned me from a legal point of view, from a constitutional point of view, from a civil rights point of view. Um, so I could come to my place of neutrality and then ask myself, is there anything I can do about this? Or do, do I want to do about uh, anything about this? Is wisdom prompting me to do anything about this? And as it happened, there was a period where it, where it was. So I 
wrote a couple of articles with a colleague for a national newspaper here, pointing out where what I saw as overreach. Um, and I joined some, you know, some different groups and, you know, of other people who seem to have similar views. And it was very much evidence based as I saw it, you know, not sort of crackpot conspiracy theories. <laughs> and I stood for the Scottish Parliament <laughs> unsuccessfully. But all of those things are examples of coming to the place of neutrality, not doing them from panic or anxiety or fear, but just I, my discernment suggested there should be a different voice in here. And then there came a time after this, the, the elections in Scotland, which were in May, where I thought, right, I've done my bit. <laughs> I've done my bit. And I'm now putting that down and other people can, who maybe feel the same way I did, can take that mantle. And, and I'm back, my focus is very much 100% on my work with, you know, coaching and writing and sharing the three principles. And, and again, that just felt like a, a natural evolution. None of, and, and the lovely thing for me is it's, it's kind of coming from a place of the sense of being, I mean, it sounds pompous to say guided, but you know, just from that listening to wisdom, listening to wisdom as opposed to reacting and panicking and just rushing out in all, all directions. So to me this understanding is intensely practical because it enables us to face absolutely anything knowing and this is this i'm deliberately putting it this way knowing that there is the potential to be at peace with it and the reason i put it that way is sometimes i'm not initially at peace with some or even it's not initially at some point i you know, I get an uproar about something, but I'm not stuck there because the uproar, the lack of peace is inner created and I don't have to be stuck there until circumstances change or something else happens. The only, you know, the, the only thing that needs to happen to before I revert to peace of mind is for the that thinking to dissolve, you know, to just move on and every thought's as flimsy as another one. And I love that you said it is not passive mm. because there's a member of my family who was in the crisis and I tried to point her in that direction. And she thinks it's becoming a victim. And I'm trying to explain to her exactly what you said. Now, from that calm, something came up to you to, to write those letters and, mm -hmm. and to join those groups. But it was from a calm space. So it's not passive. Yeah. I would say it's almost the opposite of being a victim. In fact, not almost, it is the opposite of being a victim because I felt like a victim before I knew this. And I don't mean that I was, I, won't, I was a reasonably confident person in some ways, but I felt that all my hurt, unhappiness, stress, worry was being put on me by the outside world. And when you see through that, when you see that, no, there's things happen, but all the color, all the flavor, all the emotion is internally created, then that immediately takes you away from the sense of victimhood. But underneath that, this we can still respond to the stream of things happening in the world coming towards us with wisdom, with action, you know, activism even. I mean, I'm not particularly drawn to that now, but some people are. There, there is nothing um you know there is nothing of the victim there's nothing passive in this to my you know to my mind beautiful <laughs> thank you thank a lot you. christian thank for you, your really time and you. wisdom and if people want to find you where can they find you um, I have a website called elementsofwellbeing.net and um, on there with contact details, etc. And yeah, well, it's lovely to speak with you, Martine. Thank you very much. Very lovely. Thank you. <laughs>